So change detection allows you to identify what's changed in an area over two or more time periods. This can be useful in a number of situations, but one would be within an assessor's office. So an assessor's office could use LIDAR and change detection to actually identify potential areas of missed revenue, which could obviously be something every agency is wanting these days, finding more revenue. So what we'd like to do is look at how they can use change detection to identify these areas, compare that against their uh, permit database, make sure that these uh, additions are gross and uh, property were permitted, and make sure that they've been reassessed. So I've been talking with an assessor recently, and she uh, mentioned that she's going to be meeting with the Board of Supervisors. And she's going to be talking with them about uh, potential revenue for the coming fiscal year. And she wants to discuss with them a collection of, of uh, uh, missed taxes. So she's going to be bringing a delinquent tax map. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that there's got to be other information they have at the county that could be useful for this meeting. Can we talk about that a bit, Harry? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So what we're looking at here in this ARC map document is some parcel data with some imagery. As Tim mentioned, change detection can mean a lot of things. In this particular example, what it's going to mean is the change in building structures. This would be somebody adding a garage or adding on to their house. We want to identify the locations where that change has occurred. One of the simplest ways to do that is to visually look at the differences between imagery. So here I have 2008 and 2012 imagery. Using the swipe tool, I can just simply swipe between them, and you can definitely see that these houses have been updated, some of them quite extensively. Now, this would be a pretty tedious process looking at every parcel through the entire county, although it would guarantee some job security. I would like to find a better way, an automated way of doing this. One of the other types of data sets that most of you have been familiar with or have been collecting is actually LIDAR. So ArcMap can directly bring in last data sets and display them inside of ArcMap. And that's what we're looking at here. One of the great things about LIDAR is that it has categories of information. And what do I mean by that? We can filter out all the buildings so that we see just the ground. And there we go. So we can now fine tune the type of analysis, the change detection based upon different criteria. So I'll go ahead and add the buildings. And just to let you know, we do have vegetation coverage in here. But I don't want to count that because I'm looking at structural changes, not if somebody got their tree trimmed. So I'm going to then turn that back off right there. So the way we can begin to use these uh, last data sets inside of arc map is to convert them into mosaic data sets and that's what I've done here. So here we have the 2012 and the 2008 mosaic data set information. Again, we're now just looking at raster data thematically mapped based upon uh, the characteristics on the ground. We haven't looked at the change yet. Well, looking at the change is actually quite simple. New uh, is this image analysis window. So when I open that window, what I can do is begin to actually do some math. I can analyze these two pieces of information. So I want to select my 2012 and my 2008 mosaic data sets that you see on the map, the gray ones. And I want to basically find the difference between them. And it's that fast. What just happened is a brand new layer was put into my map that shows you the differences between those two pieces of imagery. For symbology reasons, let me, themat let me map this a little differently to make it easier to understand. And I'm just making, just adjusting these so it's easier to see. There we go. So the areas in red means that between 2008 and 2012 there has been change. So that's pretty awesome. But the problem is we have parcels that we want to look at for change, not just imagery. So what I want to do is actually run a model. So one of the models that we've created is this LIDAR change detection model. What this model is going to do, and I'll run the entire model, is it's looking at every single individual parcel. It's calculating the volumetric change that has occurred 
in that particular parcel and adding that data onto it. So technically, it's taking each parcel, it's looking at the change uh, layer that I created, it's converting it into a tin to create the volumetric uh, information, and then it's adding that volumetric information back onto the parcel. So we'll actually let this run for all the parcels in my data set. There we go. So now, if I open up this parcel information, I can do a definition query where the volume of change is greater than or equal to 30,000 cubic feet. And for those of you who are interested in how big of a room that is, that's a 30 by 30 by 30 room. And what we come up with now are parcels that have had a large amount of change between 2008 and 2012 identified automatically with a model. So we can take this information once again and take it from our desktop by using the file share as a service and publish this to either ArcGIS Online or your own server to get it out into the hands of the people who need it. This would be field crews for the assessor or for the meeting that the assessor is going to, she could use it there. So what I've done is I've, I've changed some of the symbology a little bit and I've created pop-ups for each one of these locations that will link directly to the property information. So here is the neighborhood information, the owner, and I've connected this directly to their tax lookup. So now you can compare if they've paid taxes on a larger house because of the change. So that's really how we can take data that is collected frequently, imagery in LIDAR, and actually derive some good information on it to help us make decisions on where to begin to look for that lost revenue. Because as we all know, unpermitted structures means that somebody didn't pay for the permits. And then we can go ahead and take the appropriate actions. Having that as a web map is perfect because I know those uh, supervisors all have iPads, so they'll be able mm -hmm. to check that out during the meeting. Exactly. Thank you, Harry. So most of you have been collecting imagery for years, and many of you are now collecting LIDAR as well. So your skill to sharpen here is looking for new ways to use that existing data for analysis, as well as using that new information for analysis.